Geothermal energy from beneath volcanoes. A rebellious country in Central America. And Elon Musk. Only one concept could possibly tie these three things together. And no, it isn't an all-time great bachelor party. It is, of course, Bitcoin. Here's what you need to know. After becoming the world's first country to recognize Bitcoin as legal tender Wednesday, El Salvador plans to build Bitcoin mining factories that use geothermal energy from beneath its volcanoes, according to Reuters. Our engineers just informed me that they dug a new well that will provide approximately 95 megawatts of 100% clean, zero emissions geothermal energy from all volcanoes, El Salvador's president wrote on Twitter, before adding that the country was starting to design a full Bitcoin mining hub around it. Bitcoin is administered by a decentralized network of computers, according to Bitcoin.org. New Bitcoins are created when those computers solve algorithms, which ensure existing Bitcoin transactions are secure from fraud. However, the process is energy intensive, and other countries are looking to move away from cryptocurrency mining. A recent crackdown in China, the world's largest cryptocurrency mining location, has seen mines ordered to shut down in Xinjiang and Qinghai, according to the South China Morning Post. The BBC reports that if Bitcoin was a country, it would be in the top 30 energy consumers in the world. Additionally, the Bitcoin industry's total carbon dioxide emissions equal the exhaust from around 9 million cars, according to a March report by Bank of America cited by Reuters. The El Salvadorian president's emphasis on clean energy fueling his country's shift towards the cryptocurrency is likely designed to head off any concerns about heavy energy use. However, there are wider questions about why El Salvador has adopted the currency. Under the country's new Bitcoin bill, summarized by crypto news site Coindesk, goods can be priced in Bitcoin, taxes can be paid in Bitcoin, Bitcoin transactions won't face a capital gains tax, and Bitcoin has to be accepted as a form of payment by every economic agent. But this big commitment to Bitcoin comes just as its value has fallen, both in the face of China's crackdown and the withdrawal of high-profile support from Elon Musk's Tesla, after which its market price fell by 17%. So why invest big economic and political capital in it now? One answer might be that El Salvador's economy is highly reliant on funds sent home by citizens working abroad. They made up over 20% of the country's GDP in 2019, according to World Bank data cited by The Conversation. At the moment, these funds are delivered by money transfer services like Western Union, which are highly regulated. As a result, sending funds can be difficult, involving visits to agent offices and proof of identity for both senders and receivers. For people living out in the countryside, that's pretty inconvenient. On the other hand, sending, receiving, and spending Bitcoin can all be done on a mobile phone. What's more, up to 70% of people in El Salvador don't have a bank account, according to fraud prevention firm Acuant. Bitcoin could provide a practical place to save money without the risks of keeping physical cash. So you can see the advantages, right? The only problem is that those advantages are massively outweighed by several huge impracticalities. At one point between April and May this year, the cryptocurrency's price had fallen 50% in just a few weeks, according to MarketWatch. Normal people can't afford for their day-to-day -day cash to be shifting in value that dramatically. You can't rely on that to do your shopping. Along the same lines, according to the conversation, large amounts of Bitcoin are controlled by very few people. It is known that around 2,000 Bitcoin wallets contain over 1,000 Bitcoins. If several of the owners of those wallets sold their Bitcoin at the same time, the price could crash extremely quickly. So if it isn't really going to end up being used for everyday transactions, what's the deal here? The Financial Times speculates that Bitcoin could ultimately be a way of increasing the flow of money into the country after American displeasure at the president's decision to fire five of the country's Supreme Court judges in May. El Salvador is seeking a financing program worth more than $1 billion from the IMF, according to The Guardian, but the arrangement could be complicated for a number of reasons. If that funding is in doubt, enticing Bitcoin investors to spend money in the country could provide an alternative way to generate income. If you have any other ideas on what to do with volcanoes, you could let these guys know. With volcanic activity in mind, the State of Hawaii's Emergency Management Agency has a list of items you should include in a go bag should residents find themselves in an emergency situation. Some of the items on the list include changes of clothes and sturdy shoes, a portable battery or crank-powered radio, a copy of prescriptions, 
non-perishable foods like energy bars, beef jerky, and nuts, and a whistle. The good thing about that list is that even if nothing bad ever happens, they've got the makings of a great weekend in there. The bad thing is that if a new report on Hawaii's giant Moana Loa volcano is correct, the penetrating shrieks of those whistles could be lighting up residents' earlobes any day now. Here's what you need to know. New data has revealed more about what might set off eruptions at the world's largest volcano. In a study published in Nature Scientific Reports, researchers at the Rosenthal School of Marine and Atmospheric Science at the University of Miami modeled movements inside the Mauna Loa volcano in Hawaii, which, according to the U.S. Geological Survey website, has a summit of 17 kilometers or 56,000 feet above its below seafloor base. The researchers found that while there was recent movement along a fault under the eastern flank, relatively little movement was detected under the western flank. They concluded that an earthquake under the western flank is due. Alongside this, the researchers found that between 2014 and 2020, 0.11 cubic kilometers of new magma pushed its way into a dike-like magma body beneath the south of the volcano's summit. Given this magma influx, an earthquake of magnitude 6 or greater could cause an eruption, according to lead author of the study, Bhuvan Varugu. The last time Mauna Loa erupted in 1984, lava got within 10 kilometers, or 6 miles, of the outskirts of the city of Hilo, according to Encyclopedia Britannica, though it took weeks to do so. Evidence of smaller-scale seismic activity has already been found in recent weeks. Last week, the Hawaii Volcano Observatory recorded approximately 113 small magnitude earthquakes below Mauna Loa, mostly concentrated below the summit and upper elevation flanks of the volcano. However, the U.S. Geological Survey clarified in a statement on its website that while rates of deformation and seismicity at the summit remain slightly above long-term levels, the Mauna Loa volcano is not currently erupting. I don't know about you, but when someone tells me a volcano isn't currently erupting, I don't feel that reassured. It's like someone coming up to you and telling you a ton of bricks isn't about to fall on your head. It's better than them saying they are going to fall on you, but you do have to wonder why they've brought it up. Which one is more dangerous? An exploding volcano or a lake? Simple answer, right? You take your chances with the lake, but what if the lake was also exploding? This isn't an outlandish hypothetical in the Democratic Republic of Congo right now. It's a realistic possibility that has put authorities on high alert. Here's what you need to know. After an eruption at the Democratic Republic of Congo's Mount Nyiragongo volcano, there are fears that a limnic eruption could occur at a nearby lake, spewing out suffocating gas, according to Reuters. The specific concern is that carbon dioxide trapped at the bottom of Lake Kivu could erupt out and be carried toward the nearby cities of Goma in the Democratic Republic of Congo and Gisenyi in Rwanda, endangering more than 690,000 lives, according to the AFP. Nyiragongo, a nearly 3,500 meter or 11,500 foot high stratovolcano that sits atop the East African Rift Tectonic Divide, erupted on Saturday, releasing two rivers of lava that took 32 lives and left around 20,000 people without homes. In the wake of that eruption, the Goma Volcano Observatory, cited by AFP, has warned that Nyiragongo could erupt again and lava from it could reach Lake Kivu. If there was also an earthquake beneath the bottom of the lake, or if magma erupted into it from below, pressure changes in the water could release some of the 300 cubic kilometers of carbon dioxide contained within the lake, according to the science journal Nature. Should this happen, thousands of people around Lake Kivu could be asphyxiated, according to a warning by the Goma Volcano Observatory. According to the publication Nature, in a previous limnic eruption incident in 1986, Lake Nios in Cameroon released less than one cubic kilometer of carbon dioxide, but asphyxiated more than 1,700 people. Thousands of animals were also killed in the incident, as George Kling, a biogeochemist from the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, who visited the scene following the eruption, described. The animals were all dead, thousands of cattle just lying about, he said. The danger was exacerbated by the fact that the carbon dioxide was denser than the air, meaning it stayed close to the ground as it spread up to 26 kilometers from the lake. Thinking about cryptocurrencies? The Venezuelan president wants you to forget about Bitcoin and buy the Petro. Yeah, right. Venezuela announced that it will enter the cryptocurrency market with its launch of the Petro digital coin. 
According to President Nicolas Maduro, the petrol will be backed by oil, gas, gold and diamond reserves. Maduro said the government will issue 100 million tokens, each valued at the price of one barrel of Venezuelan crude. That would value the petrol issuance at just over 6 billion U.S. dollars. The government said the cryptocurrency will help the cash-strapped nation make financial transactions and overcome U.S. sanctions against the country. Venezuela's actual currency, the Bolivar, is in freefall, with the nation in need of basic necessities like food and medicine. The social network is coming out with a Bitcoin-style cryptocurrency, and let's just say not everyone is on board. Facebook on Tuesday announced plans to launch its own cryptocurrency in 2020. The digital currency, called Libra, is backed by a reserve of financial assets, making it less volatile than other cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. Facebook won't have direct control over Libra. Instead, it will be serviced by the Libra Association, an independent nonprofit headquartered in Switzerland. Its founding members include companies like Uber, Visa, MasterCard, and PayPal, among others. The association's main functions are to validate transactions on the Libra blockchain and manage the reserve of digital currency it's tied to. A digital wallet for the new cryptocurrency called Calibra is also being launched and will be available on Messenger, WhatsApp, and as a standalone app. Calibra will allow users to send Libra to anyone with a smartphone and in the future may be used to pay for purchases on the app or to various vendors for day-to-day -day transactions. According to Facebook, the Libra blockchain is pseudonymous, allowing users to hold more than one address not linked to their real-world identity. It claims financial data on Libra transactions will be kept separate from user ad profiles and that Calibra account information will not be used to improve ad targeting on Facebook-owned platforms. With Facebook's track record thus far, it's understandable that more than a few are wary of this new venture. CNBC reports that Democratic Representative Maxine Waters said in a statement that the company is continuing its unchecked expansion and extending its reach into the lives of its users. Citing a lack of regulatory framework for cryptocurrency, she has requested the company pause work on Libra until Congress and regulators can examine the issues and take action. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.